over to you, Catherine. Thank you, Amy. So the Bible reading that Amy's chosen to speak from this evening is from Luke's Gospel. It's Luke chapter 17, starting at verse 11. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them When he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to them, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Amen. It's really important when we open God's word, when we open the Bible, not to just simply read it, but to study it. Because hidden within most stories of scripture, there's treasure. There's treasure to be found but you have to really look for it. You have to dig deep into God's word. What's really interesting about this Bible passage, that as I read it and I read it again and I read it again, there's a few things that stood out for me. So Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. In some ways, Jesus was turning back. Jesus was heading towards the cross. He was heading back to Jerusalem. And he was traveling along a border, the border between Samaria and Galilee. Most Jewish people would have avoided the border because there was a chance that they might have rubbed shoulders with a Samaritan. So what they would have normally done is taken a bit of a big detour to avoid bumping into some Samaritans. You see, the Samaritan people were ethnically mixed nation with Jews and with pagan heritage, but not common Judaism. Those from Galilee, that's where Jesus spent most of his ministry. So you've got the Samaritans on one side of a border who were the rejected people, and you've got the Galileans on the other side who would have known Jesus would have experienced some of his ministries. And Jesus chooses that route to Jerusalem. He chooses to walk the border. I love my Jesus. Because my Jesus walks the borders. He doesn't avoid the people that other people avoid. He seeks encounters with people from all different lifestyles, from all different backgrounds. And this Bible passage tells us that Jesus is going into a village. He's not in the village at this point when these 10 people with leprosy come out to meet him. He's walking a border. And some people have come to meet him outside of the village. People who the community has rejected. People who the community has said, get out, you're dirty. And these people with leprosy come and greet Jesus, but they stand at a distance. They're not close. And they cry out to Jesus, Jesus, master, have pity on us. And what does Jesus do? He stops and he turns and he encounters them. He takes time to be with them. That small encounter with Jesus changed their lives forever. 
A small encounter changed those 10 people with leprosy forever. Because the Bible tells us that once they'd had that moment with Jesus, and Jesus has said, go show yourselves to the priests. And he would have said that because it was important. They needed to put permission from the priests to go and mingle in community again. That's why Jesus said, go, go present yourself to the priests. You need to go and get permission now. And they're healed. But this passage tells us that one comes back. That takes courage. When there's 10 people and you're one of them walking in that direction, it takes real courage to stop, turn around, and walk back. Some describe that as repentance. That's what repentance is, turning your back on sin and walking in the opposite direction. But this individual turns and walks back to Jesus, separates himself from the rest of the group. That takes courage. And he shouts in a loud voice. He's not quiet, he's loud. And he throws himself at Jesus' feet. He's no longer keeping his distance. He's drawing super duper close to Jesus. And he's drawing super duper close to say what? Thank you. Two simple words. Thank you. And interestingly, It's a Samaritan. And it points out that it's a Samaritan. It's a Samaritan that comes back, which makes me think maybe those 10 lepers that came out to meet Jesus were a mismatch of people maybe from Galilee, maybe from Samaria. But out of those 10, the one that came back was the Samaritan, the one who was less familiar with Jesus, Jesus would have been more of a stranger to him. And Jesus asked that weird question. I'm thinking of all the things to ask Jesus. He's just come back. He's just greeted himself. And he's just said thank you. And you say, we're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Jesus isn't talking to the leper. He's talking to the people stood around watching this encounter. Jesus is making a point. He's making a point that what that person did was really significant. And we hear Jesus say, rise and go, your faith has made you well. I don't know if there's a difference between being healed And being made well. But I think there might be. I think there's a subtle difference. Between just being made well physically. And being made well spiritually. I think this leper. Understood who Jesus was. That's why he went back to say thank you. Before he went on his merry way. I've been guilty sometimes of going off on my merry way and forgetting to say thank you, forgetting my manners, so to speak. But tonight, I didn't want to forget my manners. And I want to say thank you. I want to thank you for taking a chance on me. Because 23 years ago, well, it was a bit longer than that. I started working here 23 years ago. But when I was 18 and I first came into this church, I was a broken mess. I was broken physically. I was broken spiritually. And I was broken emotionally. And I knelt about here one night to receive communion. And Jesus spoke to me, broken, messy me, and said, take this bread and wine and come and follow me, or put it down and walk away. He asked me a question. 
I think in that moment, Jesus was saying, stop messing about. Are you in or are you out? Because if you're in, be in. And if you're out, be out. There's a passage of scripture in Revelation which speaks about being spat out if you look lukewarm. God wants you hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out. It talks about when he's talking to the church. And I think in that moment, knelt here, exactly here, I was lukewarm. I was neither in nor out. But Jesus said, are you in or are you out? And that night I took bread and I took wine and I made the decision to be in. I'll be totally honest with you, I had no idea what being in meant. And I didn't fully understand what I was getting myself in for. I didn't fully understand who Jesus was and I still don't fully understand who Jesus is because he's beyond my comprehension. And I didn't fully understand what it meant to be a Christian. I just knew I needed to be in. And I knew that Jesus was real. That Jesus wasn't just a character in a book. He was real. And I knew he was real because he spoke to me. And I made that decision to follow Jesus. And that decision to follow Jesus on that day not only led to my physical healing but led to my spiritual healing. That one decision changed every decision that followed. And that one decision introduced me to you. If I hadn't have made that decision, I wouldn't have met you. And I thank God that he saved my life. Not just physically, but spiritually too. And I know Jesus loves me. For my Bible tells me so. Don't always feel it sometimes. But I know Jesus loves me. And I pray you come to know that Jesus loves you too. And so I want to say thank you. Thank you to those faithful people, and I include my dad and my mum in that, who shared the good news of Jesus with me, who told me the stories of Jesus, who let me journey that path, and walked with me when I got it right, and walked with me when I got it wrong too. I want to say thank you to you. And I want to say thank you to those people who've journeyed this adventure with me. And the adventure doesn't stop tonight. My journey carries on. My adventure carries on. But I honestly say thank you. Because it's been an adventure. It's been difficult at times. It's had highs and it's had deep lows. But I thank God for both. Because through both, I've come to realize there's one I can depend on. And that is Jesus Christ. You will let me down. And I'm sure I've let you down. We all make mistakes. But I've come to realize that I can depend on Jesus that he's the one I put my faith in. But when we put our faith in ourselves or one another, we'll let ourselves down. But when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus, he is faithful. And so I want to say thank you to you first. But more importantly, I want to say thank you to Jesus I thank Jesus that from the day I was born, he stood at the door and he knocked. He stood at the door of my life and he knocked. He stands at the door of your life and knocks. 
And I hope when you hear him knocking, you let him in. Because the handle's on your side. I thank God. I thank Jesus that he stood at the door of my life and he knocked. I thank God for not giving up on me and being patient and persistent with me when I'm being stubborn. I thank God for healing me and I thank God for making me well. I thank God for saving me, for blessing me, for sustaining me through the ups and downs. And I want you to know that you can turn to Jesus at any time. And my Jesus does not turn away the people that other people turn away. My Jesus welcomes them and meets with them and invites them to come follow him. So if you're here tonight and you feel a mess, you feel broken and hurting, I pray that you've heard my story and you know that Jesus is there. And I invite you to turn around, to stop, stop where you are, turn around and start walking towards Jesus. Because if you do, he is faithful to turn the ashes into beauty and do something wonderful with your mess. But he says, are you in or are you out? Don't mess about. You're either in or you're out. Get in. It'll be the best decision you've ever made. Jesus is faithful. So please, I'm going to be around. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to continue to worship with my church family at Oasis. I'm going to continue to serve on the leadership there for a little bit longer until a new person is appointed and then I need to respect their, them and just they can tell me whether they want me to hang around or not. I'm still going to be following Jesus. I'm still going to be preaching. I'm still going to be worshipping. I'm still going to be serving in Sunday school because I love it. I'm not going anywhere. But please, if you remember nothing about my ministry, remember Jesus saved my life. And he can save yours too.